Hello everybody, it's Minmax Munchkin again. Uh, I know, I know it's been two weeks and no video, I'm sorry. I've been a little bit busy with other stuff in my life. So, apologies for that. Um, today we are going to cover Barbarian uh, class as a whole. With all the primal paths and all the features the Barbarian class offers. Now, Barbarians are... Uh, one of the most strength-based class options uh, that you can have in 5th uh, edition Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, basically, the two most uh, recognizable, two most distinct features of uh, Barbarians, Rage and Reckless Attack, both go off of strength uh, very significantly. And uh, on top of that, the secondary... Uh, Ability is constitution because your unarmored defense also uh, adds your constitution modifier uh, to the overall number that you get. Now, obviously, barbarians are in the na in the name of the barbarian. It implies that they're they're more like savage brutes that are not that much trained, but rely more on brute strength and force than uh, particular martial arts training whatever it might be to deliver the damage and deliver the hurt and that's what uh, the class actually delivers uh, mechanically as well uh, so if you go if we go over the features and abilities of this class you can pretty much figure out that this class delivers just the raw power and uh, the the damage is just coming up from the rage and uh, the savageness of the class and not particularly from the ability to fight well. Uh, although they are very good fighters and damage dealers. So, uh, arguably, Barbarians are also the easiest class to pick up for new players. So, if you are a new player, uh, pick up a Barbarian. Uh, in my case, uh, my first ever character was a Ranger. Not really the easiest class to pick up, but... Uh, my second character was a barbarian and it's been a blast so um, yeah I can speak from experience it's very easy to play it's actually very fun to play if you figure out all the situations you can uh, kind of uh, role play the savage brute character that, that that lives in some kind of uncivilized or primal or tribal uh, 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 group of people or maybe other types of humanoids uh, so yeah um, Features and abilities, rage obviously the most, probably the most important feature of this class, uh, goes off of strength, uh, enables you to have advantage on strength checks and saving throws, uh, so when you make melee weapon attack using strength, uh, you also gain a bonus to damage rolls, and that bonus is uh, represented in the table of the class uh, all up until 20th level. The damage increase is not that significant uh, at first but um, later on it really stacks up because you get extra attack and you get other features that increase your damage as well so you're delivering a lot of damage uh, with single blows uh, more than probably more than any other class out there uh, just uh, just physically obviously there are classes that deliver a lot of hurt but uh, yeah anyway uh, Unarmored defense always good to have uh, something to fall back to if your armor uh, Doesn't enable you to or you just lose it or whatever and uh, Most times your unarmored defense is going to actually give you more AC more armor class Because you can add your dexterity and constitution plus 10 So like it's very easy to have 16 17 18 even even 20 uh, AC at certain cases, especially at higher levels. Uh, one important uh, part is that uh, the rage only works with the. Um, well, goddamn, it actually doesn't say, right? It actually, yeah, it, it does say here. There, there we go. Yeah. So I just, I had a moment of, oh god, uh, oh my god, like this Wikipedia doesn't have the important info. So yeah, you cannot wear heavy armor while you're raging. Uh, but you can wear medium armor and uh, you can still have like 16 if your dexterity is 14. Uh, so yeah, uh, and also you have resistance to bludgeoning, piercings and slashing damage uh, as well as the damage increase and uh, advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. 
Now, obviously, also can't cast spells. Uh, in one of my previous videos about a bugbear, fighter, barbarian, multi-class with 20 feet reach, I actually forgot about this. Uh, the ability to cast spells is negated, and the ability to concentrate and already cast spells is also negated while you're raging. So this is pretty much the only class. This is like the class that you pick uh, if you don't want to cast spells ever. Like ever, you're, this is a class that doesn't cast spells, doesn't concentrate on spells, this is a class that purely relies on physicality and rage and anger and inner, inner kind of like energy that, that's emanating from it uh, to deliver the hurt and the other effects that the subclasses enable you. It lasts for one minute, it ends early if you're knocked unconscious, blah blah blah, you know the deal with this. Um, and obviously the uh, amount of rages that you have is limited. So uh, early on you have like 2, then 3, 4, up until 6. And at level 20 you get unlimited. Which is one of the many reasons why barbarians are one of the best single class uh, classes. Uh, one of the best classes to uh, never multi-class out of ever. Um... Yeah, an armor defense, reckless attack, obviously, advantage if you decide to recklessly attack on your turn. All of your attacks during that turn are uh, done with advantage if you are using weapon attacks using your strength. So once again, strength, strength. I know dex dexterity based barbarians are, are a lot of rage, no pun intended, uh, these days. But uh, in my opinion, uh, barbarians should, I mean... Two most important features, Reckless Attack, which enables you to have advantage, and Rage, both uh, work of uh, strength. And if you decide to maximize your dexterity, then your strength is not going to be that high. And I don't know, man, I would actually personally never do the Dexterity Barbarian, but uh, to each person its own. Um, I think these two features are too good to be just ignored. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's about it. Danger Sense, always good to have on a second level as well, like, uh, the ability to have advantage on dexterity saving throws. This is regardless of you raging or not raging, uh, that you can see such as traps or spells. So all of those fireballs, uh, hidden uh, traps and whatnot, all of those dexterity saving throws, uh, you have advantage on those. Now, we get to third level and the primal paths, which we are going to cover later. Obviously, you have a lot of choices here, especially with the Xenotar's Guide to Everything, which added uh, additional three uh, subclasses, primal paths to the Barbarian class. Ability score increase is pretty straightforward, 4, 8, 12, 16, and 19. Um, nothing, sp nothing spectacular here, uh, 5 increases, just like the rest of the classes, uh, except Rogue and... Uh, what was the other class? Rogue and uh, Fire, right? Yeah. Uh, so extra attack at level 5, pretty, I mean, pretty self-explanatory. All the primarily fighting, primarily martial, primarily physical classes get extra attack at 5th level. Fast movement, also at 5th level, your uh, speed increases permanently by 10 feet while you aren't wearing heavy armor. Again, another feature that uh, strictly works if you don't wear heavy armor. So, barbarians are intended to be these uh, hulking beasts that rely on their brute uh, strength and uh, will, will of power and stuff like that to just like uh, negate damage and resist all of it, right? So, uh, Feral Instinct at 7th level you have advantage on ish initiative rolls. This is, this is huge. I actually never played a 7th level barbarian. I only played up until 5th. But I can tell you right away, I had two party members, uh, and both of them were on 7th level, and advantage on initiative rolls is huge. Like, uh, it's, it's, really, it's really good to have this feature. Uh, also, if you are surprised at the beginning of combat and aren't incapacitated, you can act normally on your first turn, but only if you enter your rage before doing anything else on that turn. So basically, this feature enables you to be higher on the initiative rolls on average and additionally if uh, an enemy for example an assassin or something pulls off a surprise round uh, and you aren't incapacitated if you decide to act normally on your first turn 
Uh, you can ent you can if you enter rage on your first turn, you can act normally. So that means you have your move action and bonus action. And this is actually pretty huge. This is basically an alert feature uh, that you get at uh, an alert feat uh, that you get at seventh level, which is pretty early. Uh, at level nine, br brutal critical. In one of my previous videos, I already covered uh, why this particular feature is also very, very good. Particularly if you decide to make a crit fishing build that uh, most often combines with champion fighter uh, for the increased crit chance combined with reckless attack, which then uh, nets you somewhere or a bit less than 30% crit chance. Uh, if I uh, if I remember to do it after I upload the video, I'll uh, leave a link somewhere on the screen, uh, probably up in the uh, upper right corner. Uh, with that said, at level 11, uh, you have Relentless Rage. So starting at 11th level, if you drop to zero hit points while you're raging and you don't die outright, uh, in other words, if the damage you receive doesn't... Uh, actually uh, delivers more than your HP, max HP uh, damage below zero. Uh, you can make a DC 10 constitution saving throw and remember you are a constitution, you have proficiency in constitution saving throws. So strength and constitution. Um, and yeah, basically with this feature, uh, you ca if you succeed and DC 10 constitution saving throw at level 11 uh, with that means you, your constitution is going to be at least 16, so that's plus 3. And at level 11, your uh, proficiency bonus is going to be plus 4, so that's like plus 7 on constitution. So you only need to roll 3 to uh, uh, avoid uh, getting dropped to 0 hit points. That's a lot of... That's, a, that's like your chance at level 11 of dropping to 0 hit points while you are raging is very, very low. Now, obviously, each time you use this feature after the first, the DC, the DC increases by 5. So that means the first time you only need to roll 3, or maybe even less if you have higher constitution. Uh, the second time you need to roll 5 uh, more and stuff like that. But still, uh, when you finish a short or long rest, the DC resets to 10. And remember, you won't get down to 0 each hit points every fight. So certain fights you're like... You're going to fight and probably never drop to zero. So this feature is really useful. Really, really good. Like, it's it's a high-level feature. It's like a tier 3 feature, but still really, really good. Persistent Rage, beginning at 15th level. Your rage ends early only if you fall unconscious or if you choose to end it. Now, this is the point of uh, a lot of uh, argument in my personal group that I play with. Uh, there's like six, seven of us. And... Uh, I personally think that this is a ribbon feature at level 15. Uh, in my opinion, I would uh, I would enable the barbarian to remain in the rage if he or she uh, just spends her action on uh, delivering, on attacking something. Now that something doesn't even need to be a humanoid, doesn't even have to be a creature. If you are in rage, uh, you are basically not... Al if you want to... From like level 3, let's say it like this. Well, rage you get at level 1. So like from level 1, this is how I would do it. Uh, you would actually get rage and be able to keep rage even if you don't hit somebody or something. Um, only if you spend your action uh, doing some kind of... Uh, Angry movement, angry action. Let's let's like let's this let's uh, let's say it like that. So, for example, if you're in a dungeon and there's no more enemies around you, and you you only wasted like two rounds out of ten, and you want to keep your rage for eight more rounds, I would actually let you do it if you spend your move and then spend your action on like smacking walls on the or the floors or the ceiling. So that's how I would do it, but s strictly by rules, uh, you cannot actually keep your rage going up until level 15 if there's no enemy around you. So while raging blah blah blah, uh, 
if you end early, if you're knocked unconscious, there, there you so, or if your turn ends and you haven't attacked a hostile creature since your last turn. So, rage actually implies that you have to attack a hostile creature to keep it. I don't know, man. Uh, I think that if you're in a fight, if, especially if you're in a situation where you know that enemies are somewhere, uh, you can rage, but uh, definitely ask your DM how he or she rules uh, these uh, features. Uh, obviously, um, some DMs abide more by the, by the rules, some DMs abide more by their interpretations or whatever, so to each its own. Uh, Indomitable Might at level 18 is pretty significant, because if your total for a strength check is less than your strength score, you can use that score in place of the total. So, I mean, at level 18 your strength is 20, so there you go. Uh, Primal Champion uh, at level 20, the pr uh, probably the best, if not the best, definitely top 3 level 20, uh, so... Uh, Cap capstone feature of all classes there are out there. So you embody the power of the vaults, your strength and constitution scores increase by 4 uh, and their maximum is now 24. Uh, also don't forget that at level 20 you also get unlimited rages. This is why, this is one of the reasons why barbarians as a single class are one of the most powerful, the probably the best classes to play even though sometimes they can be one-dimensional and uh, sometimes can be even boring because they are more like one-trick ponies with that said uh, Xenotar's Guide to Everything deepened the Barbarian class with additional three choices to pick as primal paths so let's go over them first of all there's Ancestral Guardian and uh, this is the uh, Xenotar's Guide to Everything uh, Primal Path. Uh, this is one of the few uh, subclasses or, or with like characters with the abilities that emulate tanking. So for example in video games a tank is somebody that aggros uh, uh, an enemy and a creature or something. And that enemy attacks it because the aggro feature, the uh, the the tank aggroed it. It went aggressively, so the creature focused on him. In D and D, there's no aggro mechanic, right? So there's no uh, algorithm that says if you attack or do something, the creature uh, must attack you, and will ignore every everything else. No, in D and D, if you go and smack somebody in the face from five feet that something or somebody uh, can just ignore you move away from you and attack the wizard in the back and uh, kill it in two blows so uh, path of the ancestral guardian is one of the probably closest thing to a tank that you can have in a party uh, aside from a couple other uh, subclasses primarily paladin and uh, I think there's one more. I, I can't. I think there is, but I just can't remember right now. Anyway, ancestral protectors. Uh, protectors. Sorry, my pronunciation. Um, at third level, while you, while you are raging, the first creature you hit with an attack on your turn becomes the target of spiritual warriors, which hinder its attacks. This is huge. Until the start of your next turn, the target has disadvantage on any attack roll that isn't against you. So basically this feature enables you to this kind of like uh, debuff, disable in some way the creature that you are attacking. And when the target hits a creature other than you with an attack, that creature has resistance to the damage dealt by the attack. So not only the target of your attack has disadvantage, also the creature that... Uh, the creature that you attacked gets attacked by um also has resistance to that so disadvantage that's like mathematically somewhere around minus five to hit for example and then on top of that the damage is basically ha halved like it's half the damage so this is huge from level three onward uh if i ever play a barbarian this is the one that i'm going to play because this is like a team player from level three 
It's not like a barbarian that goes off and smacks stuff and angry and stuff. No, this is like a really, really useful stuff to have in a, in a team. And uh, then at level 6, beginning at level 6, if you are raging again, uh, and another creature that you can see within 30 feet of you, and 30 feet is a lot for a mill class, takes damage, you can use your reaction to reduce that damage by 2d6. This feature has no limit. The only limit is that you use your reaction. So, uh, let's say that from level 6, at level 6 you have 3 rages, if I remember. Uh, no, you have 4. So, you have 4 rages at level 6. Uh, starting from level 6, there's like a possibility, this is uh, strictly theoretical, but it's possible, that if you rage 4 times, and the battle lasts for 1 minute every time, you can negate 40 times uh, 2d6 damage. And then... On higher levels, at level 10, that, that number rises to 3d6, and then 46 at 14th, uh, at, the, at this point you have like 5-6 rages. So this is like, it's not a healing feature, but I mean, if you really want to build a frontliner that is acting more like a support, and to a lesser extent damage sponge as well because if you are raging you have resistance to physical damage from non-magical weapons this is the guy to take this is the class to take uh, because not only you are going to uh, impose disadvantage and uh, d reduce the damage dealt you're also at level six of furthermore include uh, reduce the damage to one creature using your reaction every turn every round this is huge this is actually really really good uh, consult the spirits uh, at level 10 you can cast augury and clear or clear one spell uh, This is this is like more like a ribbon cre uh, feature uh, more like thematically because you are an ancestral guardian so you should have some kind of mystic ability to uh, Get in contact with your an ancestral uh, Something I don't know like you know and this is more like a ribbon feature but still, it's always good to have a class that uh, uh, another uh, kind of like qu quasi spellcasting class in your uh, team. Um, so yeah, after you cast uh, uh, after you cast either spell in this way, you can't use this feature uh, until you finish a short or long rest. So it's like really good, right? And then at level fourteen, you have vengeful ancestors. Uh, when you use your spirit shield, which is this, we just covered it, which is really good uh, To reduce the damage of an attack, the attacker takes an amount of force damage equal to the damage that your spirit shield prevents So from level 14, not only do you uh, maximally protect your allies, you also become the damage dealing you're, you're kind of like, you're like a Captain America, right? You put your shield down and you just um, re redirect the attack back to the attacker So... It's really good. It's really, really good. This this class, this like primal path, I still haven't played it. I still haven't played with anybody that played uh, this uh, primal path, but I really think it's good. From theory standpoint, it's really good. Now, path of the B battle rager. This is like one of these so sword coast adventurers guide uh, paths. Uh, it's like. It doesn't have a lot of love, and uh, I know why. And it, it, uh, like, it really is kind of like mediocre. It kind of like lacks a distinct flavor. This is basically a barbarian that wears spiky armor, deals kind of like a little bit more damage with that armor, and uh, kind of like more nimble from level ten, more speedy. But there's nothing about this uh, path that. Uh, that is really like to me uh, to me personally so uh, first of all if you are going to play in a forgotten realms um, specifically in that campaign setting uh, dwarves uh, this class this uh, primal path is uh, restricted only to dwarves so dwarves can all can be the only class to follow the path of the battle rager uh, it, it even says here your DM can leave the restriction to better suit the campaign Obviously, this is like, who cares? Uh, Battle Rager armor, uh, in essence, you kind of get uh, a simplified polar master feat ability with this feature. So while you are wearing spiked armor and are raging, 
you can use oh and spiked armor is also kind of like not that good as well because yeah it does uh 14 plus dex but it imposes disadvantage on dexterity checks unless you have the medium armor, armor master feet so this spiked armor is basically uh, stat wise is like 14 plus dex so that's breastplate it does cost 75 gold compared to 400 gold that the breastplate does but i mean if it was 15 plus dex and uh in the positive disadvantage then maybe i don't know i don't know i just don't like this class i mean i wouldn't i don't know if i would ever play this there's nothing that draws me to this class um so yeah with that said this this like spiky armor spiked armor uh does the damage uh that bonus action attack 1d4 piercing damage and if you grapple a creature uh you the creature takes three piercing damage you just impale somebody with your spikes uh beginning at six level when you use reckless attack while raging you gain temporary hit points now this is good don't get me wrong so every time you use reckless attack you get temporary hit points now let's say you are uh, fighting 1v1 against a huge monster so that monster hits you for like 10 damage 15 damage 17 damage 25 damage 10 damage stuff like that every time you hit it you gain temporary hit points equal to your constitution modifier so this class also uh, relies a bit more on constitution uh, compared to some other classes out there so uh, yeah if you bump your constitution to, to let's say 20 each time you hit it with your reckless attack uh, you get plus five temporary hit points so master hits you you hit it back you get those five back the master hits you you lose those five you get those five so this is like this is a good feature to have at sixth level don't get me wrong now battle rager charge at level 10 you get a dash action as a bonus action it's good to have but i think you should get this sooner i think i think you should get this at level three um i think and then at level 10 you should i don't know like, i don't know i just don't know about this class man starting at level 14 uh, when a creature within 5 feet of you hits you with a melee attack, the attacker takes 3 piercing damage if you are raging, are incapacitated and are wearing spiked armor. Now look at this. Compared, compare the spike re retribution to Vengeful Ancestors. At level 14, you have 4d6 reaction, uh, reaction damage, basically. Because uh, the spirit shield uh, at level 14 raises up to 4d6. And from level 14 you also get vengeful ancestors so the attacker takes an amount of force damage which is which is like one of the least resisted damage types in the game equal to the damage equal to the damage that your spirit shield prevents so 46 on average is like let me see um croatian russian language is not 20 yeah uh 4.5 plus uh no no, no it's like a four sorry four times uh, 3.5 on average, you're going to deal 14 damage with Vengeful Ancestors. On average. Sometimes more, sometimes less. And this thing right here deals 3. Wow. That's like... What? It's like this feature is trash. Ah, I don't like this. I don't like Battle Rager. Um, anyway, Path of the Berserker. Also one of the more hated classes. I played it. And due to the fact that I played it from level 3 to level 5 um i can say it's good it's not the best it's not very good but it's good uh you can go into frenzy when you rage if you do so for the duration of your rage you can make a single meal weapon attack as a bonus action uh during the end on each of your turns after this one now any feature that gives you a bonus action attack is a good feature this feature is a little bit less good because when the rage ends you gain one level of exhaustion but this feature is actually not going to be that bad in campaigns that have like one or two fights per day and that's the, exactly the campaign that i uh, participated in we had like uh one fight a day two fights a day sometimes even zero fights per day so like at any point in time the most amount of exhaustion i had was level two and level two exhaustion um let me let me see uh eh, it's not like doesn't matter uh level two exhaustion is like not that bad trust me and especially later on when you get a cleric with the greater restoration which is just like negate your exhaustion 
this feature is like superb because uh, le le let's just compare it back to battle rager armor battle rager armor enables you to have a bonus action attack that deals 1d4 piercing damage frenzy gives you a bonus weapon bonus weapon attack so you are wielding a mole or a great axe or a great sword and that's 2d6 or 1d12 damage on top of your attack action compared to just measly 1d4 piercing damage again if you have magic items magic weapons like this is even better because this is strictly 1d4 piercing damage it doesn't say magical damage it says piercing damage so this is physical damage and there are a lot of monsters later on that resist physical damage sometimes even immune to it so trust me frenzy is not that bad i played it from level 3 to level 5 it's not bad trust me mindless rage at level 6 uh, you can be charmed or frightened frightened while raging i still have to try this but the way it's written it's kind of good it's not that good it's more like a ribbon feature kind of makes it makes sense thematically because this barbarian is the most savage most brutal most out of his or her mind barbarian that you can get basically berserker you lose your mind when you go friends you, you you lose your mind uh if you are charmed or frightened when you enter your rage, the effects is suspended for the duration of the rage. That's like really good. At level 10, you get intimidating presence. Um, basically, you can, well, it says it. You can intimidate. Doesn't matter, like wisdom saving throw. Uh, the creature can be frightened. I don't know. Level 10, this is like mostly useless. Because you, you cannot afford to bump even your charisma. You need strength. You need constitution to a lesser extent you need dexterity because your uh, uh, armor class is increasing by dexterity you cannot afford bumping your charisma uh, uh, on top of all the or on top of those three abilities so i don't know this feature is like meh uh, but can be good level 14 retaliation is insane it's a high level tier, tier 3 ability feature but when you take the damage from a creature that is within five feet of you you can use your reaction to make a meal weapon attack against that creature so i did a crit fishing build video uh, this this is my this is my last video before this one uh, go check it out so this feature com combined with sentinel feet which enables you to have a reaction attack when the creature that is within five feet of you attacks somebody else other than you Combine that with this, uh, basically reads, if the creature that is within 5 feet of you attacks, you you can attack that creature back. That's basically what it is. Because this this is the class to take sentinel feet with. Um, yeah, that's like plain and simple. That's about it for it. Uh, Path of the Storm Herald, we have one in party right now. It's level 8. It's great. It's It's like... It's like the most magical, the most mystical uh, barbarian that you can get. Well, Totem Warrior is up there. Ancestral Guardian, maybe. But this is like most, let's say, arcane kind of barbarian. Most, the closest thing to a barbarian that has some semblance of spell-like ability. Uh, arcane ability. So you have these storm auras, we, we are not going to go in, into details, each aura does like damage, uh, kind of like this one increases the, gives temporary hit points to creatures, uh, so from level 6 you get like better ones, and also at each level you can change these auras, so as you level up you can switch from uh, desert to sea or from sea to tundra, uh, our barbarian has C aura and it's really good, uh, probably the best, uh, so if you want you can pause the video and read these right here or just go to this, uh, go to this URL or Google it. Uh, at level 10 uh, I think this feature is uh, really good uh, because it enables, to, enables you to, e to give each creature of your choice the damage resistance to uh, Storm Soul feature that you gained uh, from the Storm Soul, right, obviously so while it's in the storm aura and the storm aura actually has a range of 10 feet so it's not that good 
but uh, it's not that bad either. Uh, Raging Storm, uh, uh, like level 14, kind of like, I don't know, uh, more like uh, controly debuffy, something like that feature. Good, not that good, most of the uh, juice is at level 3, at level 6. Um, Path of the Totem Warrior, one of the best, probably still the best barbarian primal path overall. Again, you have a lot of choices here. Bear Barbarian is one of the best, probably the best choice. Uh, Wolf is also good because you can give your friends advantage. You can also take the Eagle to take the dash action as a bonus action on your turn. Now remember, Totem Spirit and Aspect of the Beast are not the same thing as here. Here, if you take the Sea Aura, you have Sea Aura on all of these features. Here, you can take at level 3, Bear. At level 6, well... Maybe you want to take the eagle, or maybe you want to take the tiger. So you can combine them. This is like one of the most uh, versatile choice-wise. This is one of the most versatile, versatile uh, uh, barbarian paths out there. Uh, also, not do not forget this. You gain the ability to cast beast sense, speak with animals, but only as rituals. So this is another barbarian path. That has some kind of like semblance of uh, spell casting ability. It can cast spells. At level 10, uh, you can cast also the third type of spell, which is commune with nature spell, but only as a ritual. So, Path of the Totem Warrior is like. You're like a shaman, but you're like an angry shaman, right? So, you kind of like get angry, you get into the rage, but you can commune with like. Uh, animals and beasts and you have like a, na a touch with nature and stuff like that like it's really cool and it's really good uh at level 14 totemic attunement uh pretty much capping your uh uh totem choices again if you pick the bear or any of these here you can pick anything here so yeah a lot of choices here we are not going to go over them a lot but uh just remember if you want to play a barbarian that has like a more more streamlined more personalized more like in-depth kind of approach to the character progression this is the one to take a path of the zealot you're just like a raging a divine a savage divine raging savage that's what you are so you are infused with this divine fury when you rage each creature that you hit the first creature that you hit on your turn with the weapon attack gets 1d6 plus, plus half your barbarian level. So this like a scaling feature, deals extra damage. This is the barbarian to take if you just want... Oh my god, I don't care, I just want to deal damage. So this is the one to take. Also, that extra damage can be necrotic or radiant, depending on what side you kind of like pick. Radiant is more like side of the good and law. A necrotic is more like, let's say, chaos and evil, but to each its own. Necrotic can also be like a perfectly divine god that, uh, like a, a god of death. It can be a necrotic kind of damage, right? So it doesn't matter. That like, it's more like flavor. So you can do whatever you want. Warrior of the gods, also a level 3 feature. Um, not that useful at level 3, but for example at level 4. Five when when your level five cleric can cast revivify spell, which requires a 300 gold pieces diamond that gets spent. This feature is really good. So at level three is going to be like almost useless. Um, but at level th uh, five onward, if you have like a single class caster with the access to revivify and um, restoration and uh, resurrection spells. The caster doesn't need material components to cast a spell on you. So this is ac actually really good. Uh, fanatical focus at level 6. If you fail a saving throw while you're raging, you can reroll it and you must use the new roll. Any ability that gives me uh, the... Uh, any feature that gives me the ability, the option to reroll a failed something is a good feature in my book. Especially if that feature comes very early on from tier 1 to tier 2. I like it. Now it does say that you can use this ability only once per rage, but let's let's be let's be realistic here. Uh, Rerolling a failed saving throw is really good. 
Uh, zealous presence at level 10 as a bonus action. You can unleash a battle cry, battle cry infused with divine energy. Up to 10 creatures of your choice within 60 feet of you can hear you. That can hear you gain advantage on attack rolls and saving throws. Now, this, this is like a good team play feature. Like you can use your bonus action to infuse, give your friends and teammates allies advantage or stuff like that. But uh, it's kind of like late At level 10. You like there's a lot of way to level 10. Yeah, if you start at level 10 or above, if you start a campaign there, it's like really good. But there's like you will have to wait a lot to get this feature. Don't get me wrong. When you get it, it's really good. Uh, and again, if you once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. Fair enough. Fair, fair enough in my book. A rage beyond death, beginning at 14th level, while you are raging, having zero hit points doesn't knock you unconscious. So, if we go back to the feature of the barbarian that says a relentless rage. No, not, uh, yeah. Relentless rage. So, starting from level 11, if you drop to zero hit points, you make... Uh, DC 10 constitution saving throws which increases to DC 15 if you uh, have to repeat it then DC 20 and so on uh, so every barbarian has this zealot barbarian has that plus rage beyond death so at level 11 he has that basic feature with that constitution saving throw and then at level 14 while you're raging having zero hit points just doesn't matter you keep raging you still do, you still must make death saving throws, don't forget about that. So you are making death saving throws and you suffer the normal if normal effects of taking damage while at zero hit points. So every time you, t you get hit while you are raging uh, at zero hit points, you get automatically a failed death saving throw. But still, for the full uh, remaining of your rage, uh, if you would die due to falling that you don't die, you, there we go. If you would die due to failing death saving throws, so if you have three death saving throws equaling, you are dead. You do not die until your rage ends, so you just keep fighting. You are dead, but you haven't died yet, so if that makes sense. Uh, obviously, if your rage ends, you die, and that's it. But during that time, during the time that you are raging and you are dead, your cleric has more time to revivify you. Your cleric has more time to cast ca some kind of resurrection spell on you. So, this is a high level, this is a tier, th tier 3 feature, but it's a really good feature to have once you get there. With that said, if you like this video, this long video, uh, like, share, comment and subscribe and tell me in the comments down below if you, uh, if you would want me to actually expand a bit more on these subclasses or if you want me to just talk overall about these uh, uh, subclasses and classes. So this is like more of a medium kind of approach, middle of the road. I kind of like went a bit more into the subclasses. But I didn't spend too much time on them. On the other hand, I didn't also just like speak in general terms. I kind of like went over each feature. So tell me in the comments down below, please. Uh, and uh, with that said, once again, like, share, comment, subscribe. I need those subscribers. I need everything. This channel is kind of growing. Snail pace growth, but uh, still growing. So I'm thinking about actually investing a bit more of my personal time into it. So yeah, if you like this content, if you like all of my previous videos, if you like this video, drop a sub, hit the bell button, get notified every time uh, I upload a new video. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and that's it. Min Max Munch King out, and goodbye.